What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video we're recapping the Six Nations round three that took place this past weekend. We saw Italy take on Scotland, we saw Wales and France as well as um, um, England taking on Ireland. Exciting rugby we witnessed um, and um, interesting turnout of events of how the games went. Some different to what expected from a predictions point of view. Didn't have a great weekend but those are also good times because it just shows the level of intensity and excitement that the rugby produces. Let's start off with Italy taking on Scotland. 17-0 was the final score. Bit of a scrappy game with Scotland coming away with th three tries, making um, Italy's winless streak continue, which raises obviously a lot of questions as Georgia have now officially overtaken them in the world rankings. Three tries, Stuart Hogg finally getting some brilliance um, in the game opposed to his two previous games where he really hasn't been playing great. Chris Harris getting a try as well as Adam Hasting, uh, Hasting, sorry. Um, however, the kicking percentages wasn't too great from Scotland, 25%, which isn't good enough. Definitely shows Finn Russell is definitely missed there, but um, they'll want to improve on that going forward. If we look at the metres run, Scotland got 561 versus Italy's four, uh, 413. 18 kicks from hand to Italy, 30 kicks from hand to Scotland, 188 passes, 171 passes, that goes to Scotland. 146 runs versus 152 runs to, to the Scots as well. If we look at percentage of the possession and territory, Scotland 52% of the game, um, with Italy's 48%. 58% um, of territory versus Italy's 42 both halves pretty much similar, change of pace a bit. Scotland obviously leading um, in the first half, 56% and 59% in territory. But second half, Italy fall back a bit with 52% of the of the possession. However, territory, 58% to Scotland. So unfortunately, not enough for them to really capitalise on getting points. Clean breaks, 12 versus 11 to um, Italy on the 12. 21 defeat is beaten, 31 defenders beaten to Scotland, 14 offloads versus only 6 to the Scots, 95 out of 103 um, rucks won versus 106 of 113 rucks won to um, uh, the, the Scots, um, 8 out of 11 moles run for, for Italy, 72%, they want to work on that, and 5 out of 7, which is 71% for um, the Scots, also want to work on that. 17 turnovers conceded for Italy and 15 for Scotland. If we look at the defence-wise, Italy getting um, 212 tackles full on, which 181 of those being successful. Scotland 187 and 166%, uh, 166 of those being successful. 89% for Scotland and 85 for Italy. Lineouts, 6 out of 8 for uh, sorry, scrums, 6 out of 8 to Italy, 3 out of 4 to the Scots, um, and then lineouts 114 out of 16, having lost just the 2, and then Scotland losing 114 out of 15. Then we finish off with uh, penalties conceded, 1 yellow card for the Italians, 8 penalties given away, and 10 for the Scots. Definitely need to work on the discipline, because to convert those into points, it changes the game big time, so I think... For Scotland, yes, it's their first win of the tournament, which is great for them. Um, but there's a lot of improvement that needs to be done in order to get them get them to where they were in the past. It's a good win. It's a much needed win. But um, I, we need to get a um, better flow from the Scots as they approach the final stage of the Six Nations. Two games left. Um, so they'll want to end off with the bang to get just a bit further up, up the log. But overall, good win for Scotland um, definitely needed. Then we move on to Wales versus France. The French Grand Slam hopes surge after a thrilling win over Wales. Well done to France for showing up and converting on the point, points needed. Wales scoring two tries, France scoring three. It's another one I got wrong. I, I, I saw France doing well and it being a close game, but I thought with Wales being at the home ground advantage of that powerful Millennium Stadium. I really thought that would be the gel for them, um, but it wasn't the case. Um, 
the French held their own. Kicking percentage, 100% for Wales, which is great for them. 83% for um, France, obviously converted more. They would have got up, gone higher up. If we look at the kicks run, 523 for Wales, 460 for France. Possession, and this is the interesting part of the stat. We see one result, which goes to France. But if we look at possession, 61% of the possession goes to Wales and 63% goes to Wales as well of the territory. So amazing stuff. First half, Wales had it all. I mean, 70% of the game in the possession in the first half. And then the second half, 74% of the territory. France came back and, and showed up a bit more to even it up to 52, um, to 48 and then 50 to 50 of the territory. So interesting stuff. Um, from the results that we've seen um, out of this. Normally you see a favorite team win, but hey, that's 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 for you. Defending, um, 132 tackles made from Wales, 114 of those been successful, 86%. 204 tackles made from, um, from France, so quite a high ratio there. 177 of those been successful, 87 of those being 87% overall. Discipline, two yellow cards from France and 13 penalties conceded. If, however, Wales converted more of those into obviously points and penalties, could have been the change of the game. So France needs to work on discipline going into their final games. It's not going to be easy um, as they continue this tournament. I think it's Scotland next for France. And then it's, it's going to be Ireland, which is going to be an interesting bout. So for me... France need to work on their discipline, but overall, it's a win for them, a great win for them. Wales only got seven penalties conceded, but um, they'll want to bounce back. Dylan Lewis being the try scorer and Dan Bigger for Wales. Anthony Balthier in the seventh minute, France went in and scored. 30 minutes late, uh, uh, Paul Willems has scored, that's a very French name, and then Romain Nittemak. On fifth, in the 52nd minute. So France picking up the win 27 to 23. Well done to them there. Grand Slam hopes are still alive. Then we get to the game, which was a lot of talking about. Jakub Piper being the, the man to talk about as being not consistent enough in his refereeing. Um, I only saw brief highlights of this game, but England looked dominant. Um, Ending in Ireland's Grand Slam hopes. So that's a, a big one for them. 24 to 12 was the scoreline. I think it was 17 0 um, at one stage as well. Three tries to two. Ireland trying to come back, but in the back they've 50 point. Obviously, in the 50th minute, Robbie Henshaw getting that try. And then Andrew Porter in the 82nd um, minute also getting a try. So much needed points that Ireland needed. But George Ford getting a try, Elliot Daly getting a try, Luke Cohen getting a Cohen Dick getting a try. There was talk of Owen Fowler wrapping around CJ Thunder's leg. There was talk of that should have been maybe a penalty. Then there was one instance of one of the Irish chaps going in on the shoulder when the guy was in the, the, the ruck or the mall. Um, some calling for a red card that, that referee missed. Um, and there was a few other instances, and I mean, that's all I pretty much saw on social while I was watching the cricket yesterday, um, is Yaku Piper, Yaku Piper. So that isn't good, and um, I hope things can come better from it. But I think both teams were affected, if I'm not mistaken. But chat to me in the comment section down below on that, what your thoughts are. Um, if we look at the, uh, the the runs, 235 metres run for Ireland, 206 for um, England. Possession, game donated really for Ireland. I mean, 61 possession and then 59 of the territory. Um, but then came, I mean, the second half was definitely Ireland's with the ball, 76% to 79. That's second half, whereas England dominated the first half. Very interesting stats. Clean breaks, three on three. Defenders beating 10, um, 17 to Ireland. Four offloads for England, two for Ireland. Rucks won 69, or oh, sorry, 66 out of 69 for England. 108 out of 110 for um, Ireland. Three out of four, Moles won. Five out of seven, Moles won to Ireland. 
11 turnovers conceded and 15 turnovers conceded for Ireland. Um, England doing well on the defence, 197 tackles made, 180 um, of those being successful, 91%. Definitely the best percentage we've seen so far in this tournament. Ireland a lot less tackles, 116 but 106 of those successful, so 91% of them too, which is great. Set pieces, England dominated in the scrums, 4 out of 4, never lost 1. Ireland had 8 out of 10. Um, Lineouts, 9 out of 11 for England, 14 out of 16 for um, Ireland. Both teams losing 2. Discipline-wise, penalties conceded, uh, 13 to um, England. They'll want to work on discipline as they continue this tournament, just trying to get... A possible chance of maybe winning this tournament if France lose the next games. Um, and then Ireland conceded seven penalties. Interesting results. I mean, to, to see it um, from a outside point of view, definitely there were clocking ref calls. Um, as you know, if you've been watching me, especially from the, the south side, um, I'm not the biggest fan of Jakub Piper and um, disappointed to hear that... Uh, affected this game a bit but would that have changed the result that's my end question to you guys great results for these teams if we look at um the log france on top with 13 points followed by england and ireland on nine they're tied together but england second due to points advantage and ireland third wales fourth with uh, six points tied with Scotland, but obviously they got more points with that thrashing they gave Italy. And then Italy, unfortunately, right at the bottom. That's going to do it for this recap of the Six Nations Round 3. We're on another break, which is always sad, but we will definitely catch up um, and chat more when we return for Six Nations. But there will be a lot of content else coming out. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys soon for another one. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers.